In today's video, we're going to be going into the five mistakes that can ruin your marriage and how to fix them. Now, before we go further into this, it's important to note what the purpose of marriage is. Yes, marriage means different things to different people. We have different reasons why we even get married. But if you're watching this video and if you're someone who follows me and subscribes to my channel, then I'm guessing you're probably someone who values connections, who values your relationships. And when you really think about it, marriage is all about creating a relationship where you have connection, where you're able to support each other through your life. And sometimes along the way, this intention gets lost with who's right and who's wrong and who did more and who did less. And we lose focus of the real purpose of what we're trying to do, which is to create a relationship that feels supportive, nurturing and fulfilling for us. And despite your best intentions, sometimes you end up engaging in behavior that causes more disconnection and causes more conflict. So by sharing these five mistakes that you might be making, you can have a better idea of how you need to show up in your marriage to create more connection rather than create conflict and disconnection. So throughout everything I'm going to be sharing today, we're going to be bringing it back to this question of am I engaging in behavior? Am I responding in a way that is creating more connection, that is nurturing more connection? Am I reacting in a way that is actually breaking down connection, that is actually causing more disconnection? The first mistakes that ruins marriage is a piece of advice that we get everywhere. This might trigger some people, but I have to say it. And this is the advice of communication is everything. Now, let me just say this. Communication is important, no doubt. However, it's about the type of communication you have. Sometimes we think communication is just about pouring your heart out to the other person and just letting them know your truth and just blurting out everything that comes to your mind um, and telling them how wrong they are and how right you are. But that's not really the kind of communication we're after. Communication is important. The wrong kind of communication can cause more disconnection. So what kind of communication is going to create more connection and what kind of communication is break down that connection? So the question you really want to ask yourself before you communicate is, is this communication geared towards creating connection or towards creating disconnection? Which brings me to my next point, contempt. Contempt is something that you see in so many relationships. It causes such problems in marriage. When I speak about contempt, it's about the way in which you're approaching your partner. You might feel the need to bring to their attention something that's important to you, but you do it in a way that actually undermines them. This contempt can come across in the form of sarcasm, in the form of belittling someone, in the form of always assuming the worst of your partner. Not only is contempt hurtful, but it actually breaks down connection in a marriage and it causes your partner to want to avoid you and avoid communication with you because it becomes so painful. Connection is really about vulnerability, the ability to kind of allow yourself to be seen, to be truthful about who you are, to expose yourself completely. And when you are being contemptuous towards your partner, you're making it very difficult, if not impossible, for them to be vulnerable and open with you. And that causes them to shut down. And when we shut down, we're not connecting. And so then you don't feel like your needs are being met because you're not open with one another and you are not creating an environment that nurtures connection. Now, this does not mean that you can't air your concerns. You absolutely should be able to air your concerns. And that's another big mistake that I see people making in their marriages where they feel like it's better to not say anything because that's going to lead to a fight, it's going to lead to an argument, but it's all about how you approach it. Yes, if you're going to approach your partner in a sarcastic, contemptuous manner, bringing them down and dragging them down, then of course it is going to create a huge amount of conflict. If you learn the skill of being able to communicate how you feel in a way that is respectful and in a way that actually allows you both to be vulnerable and open with each other, then airing out your concerns actually allows amazing connection to be nurtured because then you take those situations and you take those issues, you work through them and you grow through them individually 
and as a couple and that really takes you to the next level of your marriage. This is really how you build a foundation of connection and openness within your marriage. The third mistake that I see couples making, making assumptions. And this is obviously not just in marriages. We make assumptions all the time. We think we know what someone means when they use a specific word or when they're explaining something, but really, do we? For example, your partner might say to you, You don't need time for me. You're not interested in spending time with me. And you might say, I'll make time for you all the time. We sit and watch TV together. Your idea of spending quality time together might be very different to your partner's idea. And it's important to understand that. Now, neither of your definitions of spending time together are wrong or right. They're just different. What's important to note is not assuming that you know what your partner means. And by the same token, when you are the one communicating something, it's important to not assume that your partner has the same definition or the same idea of what you're trying to say. So for instance, coming back to this example of spending time together, instead of just saying to your partner, you never spend any time with me, why don't you define for your partner exactly what you mean by spending time together? What's your definition of quality time. We're also quick to assume that our partner is not interested in meeting our needs. And this assumption can really hurt a marriage because often it doesn't actually boil down to your partner not wanting to be there for you. It's simply that your partner has a different meaning associated with quality time. They have a different way of seeing it. By not assuming the worst of each other and by not assuming that your partner automatically knows what you mean, you then take the time to actually explain that. That can make a massive difference in understanding each other and creating connection. The next mistake that might be ruining your marriage is about how you give and how you receive feedback. This is a really important one because it causes so many unnecessary fights that could have actually been avoided. Oftentimes, couples feel like they cannot give each other feedback. They can't have difficult conversations because it will turn into a fight. And this can end up being true a lot of times. When we give feedback to our partners, sometimes it can be hypercritical. And when we receive feedback from our partners, we can end up getting very defensive about it. For example, your partner forgets to buy something from the grocery store. And so you go into a complete dissection of their character. You always forget this. You never remember that. I have to do everything around you. Why can't you be more like so-and-so? When you become hypercritical towards your partner, they feel attacked. When they feel attacked, their defenses will come up. Instead of taking responsibility for their actions, they might react and become hypercritical of you. And then you can see how the situation just escalates and it becomes a full-blown argument. And the next thing you know, you're sitting there wondering how you got into such a big fight about something that you didn't get from the grocery store. So how do you avoid this? Well, remember that not giving any feedback can lead to feelings of frustration, resentment, and just not being able to express how you really feel. In the short term, this can lead to you shutting down from your partner, and in the long term, it can cause severe disconnection that unfortunately down the road can lead to bigger consequences for your marriage. You need to be very aware of how you're giving feedback to your partner. Take a deep breath and think about what you are trying to communicate. Think about how you can communicate your needs without being hypercritical. Don't make assumptions about them. Don't just assume that they're trying to be careless or that they don't care about your needs. The question you want to ask yourself to guide yourself through this process is, how can I communicate this in a way that is respectful, truthful, and that can lead to a solution? ultimately the goal is not about tearing your partner down it's not about proving that one of you is right and one of you is wrong it's not about winners and losers because let's face it if one of us loses in a relationship both of us lose the goal is to create solutions in the relationship the bigger goal is to create better connection and better understanding and so if you're being contemptuous and hypercritical and making assumptions that's actually creating more problems and more disconnection at the same time, your partner may sometimes have some constructive feedback for you. They might be trying to do it in a way that is honest and that is respectful, but you become overly defensive when receiving it. And this is something that you need to be aware of. Are you jumping to conclusions? Are you assuming the worst? And this really becomes a self-esteem issue. The better your sense of self-esteem, the more open you are 
to receiving this constructive feedback and really being able to process it and sit with it for a while. Fact is, none of us are perfect. We all have areas that we need to grow in. Marriage is a relationship where many of those areas will come up. Ultimately, it's not about either of you being perfect. It's about the two of you understanding what the goal is in any kind of communication and learning and growing with each other and from each other. Which brings me to my last point. A mistake that ruins many marriages is thinking that you can change your partner. Now, hear me out on this. Changing someone versus negotiating with them is very, very different. Because you might say, well, there's certain things that I just need them to do differently. And that's understandable. And it comes down to communicating your needs in a respectful way and in a way that is solution focused and that creates more connection. Trying to change who someone is at their very essence, at their very core, is not going to work. And the person will keep resisting you and it will create a huge amount of conflict within your marriage. Negotiating is very different. Negotiating is about explaining what your needs are and then finding some ways that the two of you can come together to meet each other's needs and negotiate. The key takeaway from all of this is that having difficult conversations or speaking about uncomfortable things in your marriage is not to be avoided. Ultimately, communication is not good or bad. It all depends on how you're approaching that communication and how it's done. There are ways that you can communicate that will make your marriage better by creating more connection and creating a stronger foundation for both of you. And there are ways of communicating that will break down the marriage and cause more disconnection and just unnecessary conflict. Disagreeing is not necessarily a bad thing. Again, it's all about how you approach it, how you communicate through it, and how you treat each other through that process. I want to hear from you. Which of the five mistakes that I spoke about did you find resonated with you the most? Did you find this video helpful? If you did, remember to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Feel free to share this video with others who could benefit. Till next time, stay inspired.